following the account of the Magi coming to worship Jesus. How that when they went home without returning to Herod as he had instructed them, uh, in a fit of horrible rage, he ordered the killing of the children, the sons, who were under two years old in the area of Bethlehem. Well, God guided those wise men, both by the star that led them to Jesus, and also by the fact that he sent them home another way. The God who directed and guided the wise men still guides his people today. Kind of a funny thing happened when I was uh, working to prepare the message for today. I thought I knew where I was going to go with it. But then as it developed, it kind of took me to a completely different place than what I had expected. And I do believe that God guided in the preparation of the message so that the message you hear today will be the message that he wants you to hear. It's the first Sunday after Christmas. This Wednesday we're going to begin a new year. In the coming year, you will face all kinds of unexpected situations and circumstances. There will be days when perhaps you will feel that you don't know what to do. You know, Joseph had days like that too. I'm talking about the Joseph who belongs in the Christmas story. Think about Joseph this morning. Joseph had proposed to the girl of his dreams. Mary had said yes. The engagement was formalized. The announcement had been made. Like any young man, Joseph was looking forward to his marriage, looking forward to the day when she would be his to have and to hold. And then Joseph discovers that Mary is already pregnant. Because Joseph and Mary had not engaged in premarital sex, Joseph is absolutely certain that the unborn child is not his. Can you imagine the sick feeling in his gut when he considered what that meant? But the Bible says that Joseph was faithful to God's law. He was one of the genuine good guys. And... Uh, Although he must have been terribly hurt by the apparent betrayal, he intended to break off the engagement as quietly as possible to save Mary any additional embarrassment. Fortunately, as he considered what to do, Joseph received divine guidance when he needed it most. This guidance came in the form of a dream in which an angel appeared to him with a message from God. And the message was this. Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. So what did Joseph do? The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 2, verses 24, uh, 22, pardon me, um, and following. Hmm, I've got to find my right spot here. <coughs> chapter 1. Did you ever do this? I wrote down the wrong reference. chapter 1, which is where I wanted to go. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded. That's the point I wanted to stress. When he received guidance from God, he did what the Lord had commanded. He took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until after she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Now, there are some people who maintain that 
Mary remained a virgin all her life. But that is not supported by scripture. After the birth of Jesus, Joseph and Mary had a normal, healthy marriage, regular <coughs> marriage relationship, and that resulted in a large family. We even have the names of Jesus' brothers in scripture. They were James and Judas and Joseph and Simon. And he also had multiple sisters as well. You can check that out from Matthew chapter 13 and verse 55. But the main point here is that when Joseph received divine guidance, he did what he was commanded to do. Because of Joseph's obedience, think about this. Because of Joseph's obedience, Jesus grew up in a large family instead of as an only child with a single parent. Changed things quite a bit. And this was not the only time that Joseph received divine guidance in a dream. The passage that Norm read for us earlier gives us two more examples of <coughs> Joseph receiving divine guidance from an angel that appeared to him in a dream. In Matthew chapter 2, verse 13, when the Magi had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. What did Joseph do? He got up, took the child and his mother during the night, and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. Again, when he received divine guidance, Joseph acted immediately. And what was the result? The result was he saved the baby who would become our Savior from a premature death. A third time, an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream. In Matthew chapter 2, verses 19 and 20, we read, after Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. And what did Joseph do? So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. And in fact, he went and lived in a town called Nazareth, it tells us in verse 23, and so was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that <coughs> Jesus would be called a Nazarene. Jesus, of course, is known in history as Jesus of Nazareth. As a result of Joseph's obedience, Jesus was brought up in the place that the prophets had prophesied. <coughs> If you have not received divine guidance when you needed it, perhaps you need to ask yourself, am I willing to obey God's plan as Joseph did? Even before I know what it is. Or are you kind of like this? Okay, God, tell me your plan, and I'll give it serious consideration. Give me your plan, God, and, and I'll see whether it's something I can go along with. God knows our hearts, doesn't he? He knows whether we are going to be obedient to him. And I believe he directs those who are committed to following him regardless of the cost. Now, just to be clear... I'm not saying that God's guidance will always come in the form of an angelic visit. God usually guides us in other ways, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But I do know that God sometimes uses dreams to communicate to people, even today. We hear that there are actually many, many people who come from a background in the Muslim faith who are serious seekers after God, who are receiving dreams in which Jesus reveals himself to be the Son of God, that Jesus actually is God. It's amazing, actually. There are more people of the Muslim faith 
converting to faith in Jesus Christ, becoming Christians in our time, in the last two decades, than in all of the previous two millennia. Now personally, I have never seen an angel, at least as far as I know. I have not seen an angel either in a dream or face to face. But just recently I had somebody share a story with me about having an angel appear to him in a dream, like Joseph did. Somebody I know very well, in fact he's here with us this morning, and I've asked him to come and share this story with us. So Eric, would you please come and join me on the platform? Well, let me just start by saying that uh, about two years ago, I, uh, I promised God that if I was ever asked to do anything in the church here, I would say yes. Um, you know, and it's led to some great opportunities for ministry and some times when I've had the opportunity to get up and uh, share things. Uh, you know, if, uh, so when, uh, you know, when my dad... Uh, asked me last night to, to share this, and I mean, what went through my heart was, uh, absolutely not, I can't do that, that's something I've only shared with a couple of very close people, um, but uh, what came out of my mouth was, of course, Dad, I'd be happy to do that, so here I am. Uh, I, uh, I, I haven't shared this with a lot of people, a, a couple of very close friends, um, but uh, when I was younger, I I, uh, I was a I was a smoker when I was younger. I smoked cigarettes quite a bit. Uh, in fact, I got into it because I had a girlfriend when I was 18 that uh, she smoked. So I thought, oh well, that's a great way to you know, ingratiate myself with this young lady. I'll I'll start smoking too. And I got to the point within within a year or two that uh, that I was smoking a pack of cigarettes every day. Um, and it's a horrible horrible habit something I hope that you never get into, and I hope that you young people never touch the stuff. Because I'll tell you, I couldn't quit. I tried for years to quit. Um, after smoking for over 10 years, uh, literally a pack or more a day, I, I one time through willpower made it. Uh, I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to quit. And I quit for eight days. And for me, that was an amazing, amazing feat. Uh, at the end of those eight days, I rewarded myself with a cigarette. <laughs> it, I had no willpower to quit. And even when I did, it was the only thing that I thought about when I was trying to quit. And I, I will tell you that I prayed about it a lot. I prayed and said, God, please, if there's any way, would you take this from me? And I prayed that not once. I prayed that probably a hundred times. So, about 14 years ago, 13, 14 years ago, um, in a dream, I had someone dressed all in white visit me. And uh, this person in my dream said to me, Eric, you don't need to smoke anymore. Now, when you have someone visit you in a dream that you think might be an angel, you know, you sort of wake up sometimes and you might be concerned, well, was this an angel? Was it not an angel? Was it just me, you know, like uh, the old Scrooge thing? Was it a piece of, uh, you know, undigested meat or something like that? But I think that we know an angel of the Lord by the fruit. And when I woke up the next day, I didn't crave a cigarette. In fact, I've never craved a cigarette again. I've never thought to myself, boy, wouldn't it be nice? Which is what I thought continuously over and over and over before. So to this day, I know in my heart that I was visited by an angel. It's the only time I can definitively say that I was visited by an angel in a dream, but I know for sure that, uh, that it did happen to me. Thank you. When Eric shared that story with me the other day, it just moved me that uh, not only did God deliver from the cigarettes, but from the craving for the cigarettes. And uh, God is good, isn't he? 
He wants to work in our lives. He wants to give us guidance. I'd like to talk about some of the ways in which God guides us. Did you know that God often guides through our inner urges and heartfelt desires? I'm talking here about godly desires. The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. I suppose that those things that we sometimes call got feelings are prompted in Christians by his Holy Spirit who is within us. The Holy Spirit within you urges you to do something or not to do something. And sometimes you even think, that doesn't make any sense, or I don't see any logical reason why I should do that. And yet, you sense that it is God speaking to you. God's Holy Spirit does guide his people. But he also guides his people in accordance with his word, the Bible. The Holy Spirit will never guide you contrary to what is written in Scripture. So, when you sense that God may be speaking to you, check it against the Bible. God provides guidance through his written word. Somebody has said that 90% of God's will for you is already written down in the book. Read your Bible. Study it. Allow it to soak into you. You soak in the Word so that it becomes a guide to your life. Remember, the Bible is God's Word to us. It's not just a collection of people's writings about God. So God guides us through the inward urging of His Holy Spirit. He guides us through His written Word, the Bible. And God also guides us through the divine ordering of circumstances. God arranges circumstances, opens doors, makes things happen in accordance with his will. And then God confirms his word to us very often through the advice and counsel of a godly mentor or a spiritual leader and also through the affirmation of your local church body. <coughs> Finally, the peace of God. The peace of God is the chief referee. When you are walking according to God's guidance, you have God's peace. The Bible says it's the peace that passes understanding. So let's just kind of go through those things again and see how they apply to each of us. First of all, pray for the guidance of God's Holy Spirit. Pay attention to those gut feelings, those inner urges. Determine that you will obey regardless of the cost. Even if you don't understand why or what God is ultimately leading you to. Secondly, spend time reading God's Word. And listening when it is taught. Ask God to speak to you through his word. As you go to read your Bible in your quiet times, just pray, Lord Jesus Christ, speak to me. He wants to speak to you through the Bible. And then thirdly, when you pray, watch to see what Very often, the thing that happens next, after your prayer, is the beginning of God's answer to your prayer. What happens after you pray is God's answer. And yet, we'll pray for something, and then we don't pay any attention to what happens when we pray. <laughs> Fourthly, I encourage you, especially if it's a major decision, to talk to a godly mentor or a spiritual leader, someone that you trust to help you discern God's will and plan for you. Pray with that person and ask them to pray for you. And then when you sense that the time is right, 
share what you feel God is leading you to with your local church body. And then check yourself. Do you have God's peace? Has He given you the peace that the way that you are going is the way that He is guiding you? Of course you should ask for God's divine guidance in the big decisions of life. Should I make this major purchase? Should I take this new job? Should I make this move to another location? Should I marry this person? <laughs> Those are big decisions. They can affect the course of your life. They will. But realize that even seemingly small decisions may have a major impact on your life. Trust God to guide you in the daily decisions of everyday life. Perhaps you think that God is too busy to bother with <coughs> small things, or even with a small individual person like you. I came across a quote this week by Galileo. Some of you will remember who Galileo was. He was, a, I guess you could call him an early scientist. The one who first discovered that the Earth actually orbits the Sun rather than the other way around. He discovered that the Earth and the other planets all move around the Sun. And that was a revolutionary thought at the time. Here's something that Galileo said that I thought was pretty interesting. He said, The Sun, with all those planets revolving around it, and depending on it, can still ripen a bunch of grapes as if it had nothing else in this universe to do. <laughs> That's pretty cool, isn't that? That's pretty amazing. But you know what's really, really amazing? <coughs> that the God who created the sun and the planets and everything else, all of which depend on him to keep going, that God can still give you guidance in every detail of your life as if he had nothing else in the universe to do. The point is this. It doesn't put a strain on God to pay attention to your life. Our God is so big that he can rule the mighty universe and still have an intimate, personal relationship with each and every man, woman, and child who will receive them into their lives. Let's pray. Lord Jesus Christ, today we realize that we receive the greatest gift, the indescribable gift of yourself. Thank you, Jesus, that you came into the world that first Christmas. But thank you that you come into our lives by your Holy Spirit when we turn to you in faith, confessing our sin and receiving you as Savior. Your word tells us that as many as receive you become children of God. Thank you that you make us a part of your forever family. And thank you, God, that you have time for all of those who are a part of your family. Thank you that you want to give us guidance when we need it most. Thank you that you want to give us guidance in the big things and in the small things. That you are with us all the way. <coughs> Help us to trust you regardless of the circumstances. And to follow you with hearts that are undivided, focused on your life. Holy Spirit of God. I pray that you would work in each individual heart right now this morning. Right now, here where we are.
Jesus' name.